Hi guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson, Matt's going to be teaching you how to play When I'm 64 by the Beatles. So as you heard, a super awesome melody in this tune and I think the best thing of this, best thing, <laughs> I think the greatest thing about this arrangement is the fact that it's going to be perfect for the seasoned beginner budding intermediate player. So it's going to be a bit challenging because it's a it's more intricate than a beginner fingerstyle piece, but it's not super duper hard, so it's going to be a great challenge for that level. Now with that said, let's talk a little bit about this lesson. So in this video lesson, we're going to be learning the entire arrangement. But if you want to get the assets that accompany the lesson, you can click this link or go to rockclass101.com and do a search for when I'm 64, spelled all out 64. Now on that page, you'll be able to get the tabs that you can print off and follow along with as a PDF format, as well as access the on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play Watch the tab scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars to loop sections. You can slow it down to any speed you wish. Just a really great asset in learning this song that much easier. So before I hand it off to Matt, I just want to talk about the form of this song real quick. So this song is a simple ABA format. And what that means is that we have an A melody followed by a B melody and then back to the A melody. So if you do want to make the arrangement longer, which uh, the original recording repeats those sections quite a few times, something like A, B, A, B, A. So if you do want to make it longer, then you can just repeat those sections, but we kept it short and sweet. So you're about to learn an intro and then melody A, melody B, melody A, and an outro. So short and sweet. All right, so I'm gonna hand it off to Matt to teach you guys how to play it, and then I'll see you at the end of the video. Let's go ahead and dive right into the intro section. So to start here, we're going to be playing a single melody line. We're going to be using our thumb on our playing hand to facilitate this. We'll start by playing the open E string. Then we're going to play three on the C string. We can use our middle finger for that. Then the open E again. Then three on the E, again using that middle finger. Then the open E. So that's the first bar, which sounds like... Going right into the second bar, we're going to use our middle finger here on the third fret of the E again. Then open A. Now we don't need to take our middle finger off because we immediately will play three on the E after that. And then we can take our ring finger here and play sound three of the A. Then we're going to play two on the A, which will take our index finger and put it down here to two of the A string. Then three on the A with the middle finger now then the pinky here on five. So that measure looks and sounds like this. And you'll notice that I'm sort of stacking the fingers with those threes, starting with three on the E with the middle finger, then three on the A with the ring, so that they both can be ringing, and then when I go to the two, I take those fingers off to add that index, and then three with the middle on the A, and then five with the pinky. Now moving on to measure three, we're going to slide this pinky up to fret seven, play that on the A string. Then we're going to play five, we can use our middle finger here on five, and move the index all the way down to three on the A, then open on the A, three on the A again with the index. Then we're going to take our ring finger and play five on the A. So that measure looks and sounds like this. And then for the final measure, measure four, we just play a C chord with our index finger still here on three of the A. So the first four bars for that intro sound something like this. Two, three, four. Now as we go into section A, we're really starting with the main melody. This is where the vocals will come in. Now because it's a solo instrumental, we won't be singing anything, but this is where you can imagine the words as you're playing with it. 
So starting on A, we're going to play zero on the G, C, and E strings together. I'm just using my thumb strumming through and stopping on the A string. And then I'm going to take my middle finger play on three of the E, then the open E string. Then I'm going to take my middle finger and place on three of the E string. I'm going to play zero on the G, C, and three on the E together. Then open E. So that measure looks and sounds like Now you'll notice I'm using that middle finger to go between the C and the E string on the third fret. There's a lot of exercises in this uh, particular arrangement that's going to have a finger jumping between strings. So it's just important to get that flexibility and that dexterity to go between those motions. So one more time on that first measure of A, it should be. Going into measure six now, we're going to start with our middle finger here on three of the E. Open A, three on the E, and then we can take our ring finger here, play it on the third fret of the A, and strum through our G, C, E, and A strings all together. So that measure looks like. Now you'll notice this time we're using our ring finger underneath so that we can set it up. So having the middle finger here on three of the E, followed by that ring finger coming on, can make it so that we don't have any dead space. If I play this note and then I take it off and place it back on to strum that chord, I'll get a moment of dead sound where I'm not fretting something. So that measure, measure six is. Now measure seven, we're going to start with a C chord, but we're actually going to move this. We're gonna use our index finger on the third fret of the A string to start seven. Pinky go up to seven on the A. And you want to try to leave your index finger near three. It can be a big stretch to go from three to seven, so if you have to take it off, that's okay. But then the very next thing we play is three on the A, taking our pinky back off. Then the open A. And this G7 chord is one of my all-time favorites on the ukulele. You need to take your index finger and bar it here across five on the C, E, and the A strings. Add the ring finger here on seven of the E string and strum through all four strings. So that measure is. Now you'll notice I like to use my middle finger to bar across the index, just to give it a little bit extra reinforcement. I find that that really helps get a nice clear tone over all the strings. Now looking at measure eight, all that we're going to do here is take our ring finger, slide it all the way down to three on the E, play that, then open on the A, two on the A with our middle finger, open on the A, and then three on the E. So that measure is. Now putting all of those four bars of A together it should sound something like this. Two, three, four. So now moving on to measure nine, this one's a bit tricky. We're going to start with a G7 chord, middle finger here on two of the C, index finger here on one of the E, and our ring finger here on two of the A. We're gonna strum through all four strings. We're gonna go to three with the ring, four with the ring, and five with the ring. Now it's okay for these two fingers to remain in the same position as if they're playing that G7, just making sure that they're not applying pressure to the C and the E strings. So it looks like this and then we go back to the G7 and do it again. So it's kind of tricky because we're putting so much emphasis on this ring finger to create this movement. If you find it really difficult, it's okay to cut the second G7 and just play the two on the A, so that looks like this. And you can even change the fingering up to use like the index, middle, ring, and pinky on that second run through. So something like. But I really like to push that ring finger to get that comfortable. So now from here, we're going to go on to measure 10, where we're going to play that G7 chord. And then one on the A, which we can just slide our ring finger down, because then we're going to just play open on the A. 
and then you'll see the all X's. That symbolizes just to take the left hand and mute the strings and then go ahead and strum down over them to create that nice little muted sound. So measure 10 is. Measure 11 now is going to go G7 again, and then up to three, four, five. So that's just like nine, only slower, and only going up. And now we go to measure 12, which I like to actually play with my ring finger here on seven, and then middle finger here on six of the A, index finger here on five of the A, and then slide it down to three, followed by another one of those mutes where you're just lightly touching the strings with these fingers. So measure 12 is. So measures nine through 12 should sound something like this. Two, three, four. Going on to 13, 13 is actually going to start exactly the same as measure five does. So it starts with the same open, and then three on the C, zero on the E, three on the E open E, and measure 14 is going to be exactly the same as measure 6. Now the only difference is at the end of 14 we're going to mute the strings and give that nice little percussive pop. So 13 and 14 are the same except for the very end of 14. So 13 14 should sound like And now as we go here to 15, we're going to play a really unique C7 chord. Middle finger here on six of the E, ring finger here on seven of the A, strum through all four strings. Then we're gonna play the A string a second time. Then our index will come here on five of the A. And then we'll play the open A, just taking off the, that index finger. So we have. At the very end of that measure, we're going to slide our ring finger down to three on the A, and our index finger here to one on the E. So that measure sounds something like this. Now measure 16 is all strummed. All that we're going to do is hold that chord, zero, zero, one, three, and we're going to go up, down, up, down. So that looks like Now all of measures 13, 14, 15, and 16 should sound something like this. Two, three, four. Going into measure 17, we're going to still be holding the same chord. Play the C, E, and A strings together. Then open on the A, so take off that ring finger. Place back the three on the A. Now this shape here, the one with the index and the three with the ring, we just slide this up a few frets to four and six on the E and the A strings. Play just the C, E, and A strings together. And then the five on the A, with just the middle finger there. So that measure is. Now as we go into measure 18, we're going to play a C chord, which we can just take this middle finger and slide it down to three on the A. Open on the A, three A again with the middle. Then we slide it down to two, and we add our index finger here on one of the C for this A9 chord. Then open on the A. So that measure sounds like. Going into 19, we're going to bar across five on the C, E, and the A with our index finger. Add our middle finger here to six of the C string, and our ring finger is going to go here on seven of the A. We're gonna play the A string again. Then we're going to take this bar, slide it up to seven, take all the other fingers off, play the C, E, and A together here, then the A string. So that measure is something like this. And that's when I'm 
60. And then for four, for the hook of the song, we're going to play a C chord just with our index finger here on three of the A. Now you'll notice that there's then a little riff, which sounds like this. And that's starting into the B section. So we're going to go ahead and learn it here, but just know that this is sort of a little pickup into the B section. So on measure 20, we play that C chord. And then we're going to take the index and bar it across three on the E and the A. Play the A, E, A, pinky up to seven on the A. So measure 20 is. So 17, 18, 19, and 20 should sound something like this together. Two, three, four. So starting here on the B section, we're going to start with an A minor chord. Just take your index finger, place on the second fret of the G string. You'll notice there's a little dot under the note that symbolizes what we call staccato, which means we want this note to be very brief in terms of its sound. So what we do is we can pluck all four strings or we can strum them. It doesn't really matter. You can kind of pick which one you like the sound of more. And then immediately after plucking or strumming them, you're going to take your fretting hand and dampen the strings by just applying a tad of pressure, just sort of resting over them so that you get that staccato sound. So that's sort of like this. That's with plucking or strumming. You'll notice each time that I do that, I'm just going to be lightly touching the strings to stop that sound. We do it four times, so that measure is just... Going into 22, we're going to build this really cool shape. It's like an E minor chord, only up high, so it makes it an A minor. Index finger here on 7 of the A middle finger here on eight of the E, and ring finger here on nine of the C. We're gonna strum our C, E, and A strings together with the thumb. Then we're gonna take the pinky and play 10 on the E. Then we're gonna play eight on the E, which should still be there with the middle finger. So that measure is. And now we're going to go all the way down and play a G chord. But what I like to do is a little bit different of a G. I like to take this middle finger and slide it down to three on the E, then take my index finger and bar it across the C, E, and A strings. So I still have my zero, two, three, two, just with only two fingers. Strum through all four of those. Then three on the E, and I'll take off the index for the zero, and then I'll put it back on for the two. So that measure 23 is. And then 24, I'm going to take this index finger, move it to 2 on the G, add my ring finger on here, 3 of the A string. Strum through all four of these, and then a little bit of strumming. I'm going to go up, down, up, down. So that measure, 24, is something like this. And starting at 21 for the B section, these four bars should sound something like this. Two, three, four. Going into 25 now, play my A minor, still with that index finger here on two of the G, and then middle finger here on two of the A, and then ring finger here on three of the A, still with that A minor, so still that index finger here on two of the G, strum through all four, and then move all the way up to 10 with the ring finger. So those two measures only have four total notes between them, and 25 and 26 should sound like. So again, sliding all the way up there to 10 on the A. And then we go to 27, which we're going to take the index finger bar all the way across the fourth fret, and take our pinky finger, add it here on the seventh fret of the A string. We're going to strum through this with our thumb. And then we're going to start doing some strumming. We're going to go down, up, up, down, up to finish 27. So 27 should sound like. Going right into 28, it's going to be down, down, up, up, down, up, still on that same chord. So 28 sounds like. 
So those four bars of 25 through 28 should sound something like this. Two, three, four. Now we're going to go into measure 29. We're going to use some harmonics here. We're going to be using those natural harmonics on fret 12. Natural harmonics are sort of tricky, but the trick is to just be touching the string. You'll actually notice that I'm going to just have my finger over the fret wire, so not in between the frets, but over the wire itself on the 12th fret, just like that. And as soon as I strike the strings, I'm going to take my finger away to get that sound on 12. And after I've done this, and then I'm going to play 10 on the A string. And when I play the 10 here, I like to use my ring finger. So it goes. Going to measure 30, you're going to play that same little A minor chord that uses our E minor shape way up the fretboard that we've talked about before. Ring finger here on 9 of the C, middle finger here on 8 of the E, and index here on 7 of the A. Strum through the C, E, and A strings then 10 with the pinky, then 8, which is still in there. So that measure is just, which you'll notice is exactly the same as 22. Then we go to 31, take our index finger bar across the C, E, and the A strings, just like so. We're going to strum our C, E, and A together, then the 5 on the A, then take it all off for open A. So measure 31 sounds like. Measure 32, we're going to fret a D minor chord, which we can do as our middle finger here on two of the G, ring finger here on two of the C, index here on one of the E, and we're just going to strum up, down, up, down over that chord for the whole measure of measure 32. So it's just. So 29 through 32 should sound something like this. Two, three, four. And now we go into measure 33. We're going to play an F chord as we normally would with our index and middle fingers. But we're going to take our ring finger and play it on the third fret of the A string. Now if that stretch is difficult, it's okay to use the pinky here on three of the A. Just encourage you to try to get that flexibility with that ring finger. Then we're gonna play open on the A. That's all of measure 33. Then on 34, we're going to fret a G chord. And here at 34, we can fret the full G chord, zero, two, three, two, but only play our G, C, and E strings. And then there's a rest, which will stop the ringing. And then we'll play a full G chord with the two on the A ringing through. So measure 34 is. Going into 35, we'll play a C chord. And it doesn't matter too much if we use our ring finger or our middle finger. I like using the middle finger just because I'm sliding that right up. Strum through that C chord, and then we're going to go down, up, down. So 35 is just through the C, then down, up, down. And 36 will play a G7. And after we play the G7, we're then going to play three on the E with our ring finger, open A, two on the A with our middle, open A, and then three on the E again with the ring finger. So measure 36 sounds like So now measures 33 30, through 36, which will actually be the rest of the B section, sounds something like this. Two, three, four. And then from this point, we go right back into the A section. And when we play through the A section this time, it's the same stuff going right on through.
So all this is exactly the same. Now on 52, the very last measure of that second A section, instead of doing the little pickup into the B, we don't because there is no pickup to the B because we're now through it. At this point, we now go to the outro. And on the outro part, it's actually going to be exactly the same as the intro, which is kind of neat because it's the same sort of stuff just repeated, but a really nice sound to sort of close off the song. So on the outro, it looks and sounds something like this. We just finish with the C chord. So the outro is the same as the intro, the second A is the same as the first A. So really when you have that first half of the song, you've got about two thirds of it done, which is awesome. With this, you can repeat other sections and have some fun sort of, you know, playing with it and mixing it up in different ways. It's a really, really neat song to do that with. So I'll see you guys next month for another one of these lessons and let me know if you have any questions. Be feel free to leave any comments down below. Thanks. Hi guys. So I hope you had a lot of fun learning this one. It's a super great challenge for the seasoned beginner budding intermediate player. So as you notice, it's a little step up in terms of a finger style piece, a little bit harder than something that would be labeled for beginners. So a lot of fun and you couple that with the awesome melodies that the Beatles write and this is just a really great piece for studying and advancing your finger style playing. So I do want to remind you if you want to get the tabs to print off keep for your records those were available over here or you can go to rockclass101.com do a search for when I'm 64. Don't forget that that on-screen tab here so that interactive tab player that you can hit play and loop sections and slow it down and do all this fun stuff for making it easier to learn all that is on that page as well. So guys again I hope you enjoyed learning this one and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.